afternoon. I'd also like to uh, let you know who else is in this virtual chat or meeting room with us. Julie Midas, who is the Director of Early Childhood Programs, and uh, she's going to be presenting a PowerPoint presentation here shortly. Uh, Tammy DeLand, who is our Director of Communications, is going to be our uh, moderator this afternoon. And then Ryan Cox from our technology department is helping with our technical assistance this afternoon. And I just want to let everyone know that this session is being recorded. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Julie Midas. Okay, welcome everyone. We're happy that you were able to join us. So we're going to share some information, as Marcia said, regarding our early childhood programming for this fall. And so beginning with early childhood family education, our ECFE parent child classes, all of those classes will be offered on the same schedule as that has been posted um, since last spring. And so we have actually contacted all of the families that are currently enrolled. We're going to be on site and um, we will be using distance learning, not distance, I'm sorry, so, sorry, social distancing um, with all of our classes. So we are capping class sizes at um, five families. So we have no more than 10 um, individuals from outside families in the classroom at any given time. So we're happy that we will be able to bring everyone back on site for those classes. And then for preschool, we have, um, options for preschool uh, and again we've contacted all of our currently enrolled families so if you have any further questions um, we're happy to to hear from you again so we're able to offer the distance learning academy where your student would do all of their learning at home we're happy to provide an ipad for all of our four-year-old students and then we're working individually with any of our three-year-old students that would need access to a device to do distance learning if their family chooses that so that option is available. You'll have a teacher working with you. They will provide some um, online screen time, some live screen time with you, and then also we'll be giving you some information using the, the CESA um, application to provide some additional um, activities for you and your student to do together. And then the hybrid model is where the students would come to school two days a week. So students would either come on Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. And we have just mailed out to our current families their actual schedule, so that will be coming in the mail. And then um, transportation, we are still able to offer transportation for families that are interested or families may um, choose to transport their student on their own. And transportation, um, that department will be sending out families their individual pick up and drop off times for those for their students um, right around September 2nd. And, and so, Julie, sure. Julie, excuse me, um, one of the questions, could you just reaffirm the, the person's worried they're on the wrong um, town hall? So could you just affirm that you're addressing uh, early childhood and preschool? Yeah, the town hall, okay. Yes, this is for all of our early childhood programming. If they miss the, the parent-child classes, um, I'm happy to answer any additional questions about the ECFE classes as well. But yes, this, this uh, town hall is for all of early childhood programming. So then our at-home um, learning instruction, as I mentioned, we're going to use the Seesaw application. And so that's an app that will already be installed on the iPads. If you're um, a family that has a three-year-old, um, we'll do what we did last spring. We set you up on a device that you have at home and your teacher will be calling you to set up an individual time to um, chat with you, come do a tour of the room if you so choose to do that on an individual basis and then get you all set up with Seesaw and all of the, all of the options and information that you need to be successful for this school year. And so we will be following all the safety protocols um, as posted um, by the Department of Health. And so all adults and students will be asked to wear masks and required to wear masks, and thus they have a medical reason not to do so. And again, as I mentioned earlier, social distancing, what we've done is that our, our students are coming in at half the capacity of the classroom. And so we will only have two students at each table so your students will always be six feet apart during our explore and learn time 
their free choice time. Um, each of our activity centers will only have two students within them, again, allowing for social distancing, but still allowing them time to play with their peers. And then the cleaning protocols. So we um, will have the sanitation products that we need to clean in between of our in between each of our classes. So all items touched by students will be cleaned prior to the next group of students coming in to use them. And then um, we do still have openings in both our ECFE class classes as well as a few of our preschool classrooms. So if you're interested in um, enrolling, if you're online just wanting to hear a little bit more, please give us a call at the number here on the screen, 320. 370-8250, and we'd be happy to see if we have an opening at the location that you are interested in attending or actually that the boundaries that you live in. So that's our presentation. Happy to answer any questions that anyone may have regarding our early childhood programming for, for this coming fall. So the first question is about what supplies uh, a child might need, and what support should a parent be ready to provide? So the supply lists are posted online. We have a list for if your child will be attending on site, and then also a list for at home, so that when we send homes, even when you're in the hybrid model, we will be sending home activities for you to do with your um, preschool student at home. So those lists are posted, like I said, online, and then they're also coming to you um, in your mailing that you're receiving, letting you know which day your student will be attending school. So you'll be receiving a hard copy in the mail as well. And then as, as far as support for your student, if your student is coming to school, mm -hmm. then we will be sending home activities for you to do with your student when it works best for you. So there'll be no requirement to say your students come on Monday and Wednesday and we send home activities, there's no requirement to turn those in the next day. Um, if your family has a lot going on, which we know all young families are extremely busy and you can't get to it and you get to it two weeks later, that's completely fine. We just wanna provide you with instructional materials so that you have them and so that you can complete those when it works best for you and your student. And a question that came in previously is about meals, if they're provided. Yeah, so we don't offer a full meal. What we offer is a nice hearty snack that will include protein. All of our classes, both our three-year-old classes and our four-year-old classes, they receive milk as well. So there's milk, there'll be protein, cheese, um, fruits, vegetables, we do crackers. So not a full meal, but a hearty snack. Tammy, you're muted. That's all the live questions we have right now. I was wondering, um, either Julie or Marsha, if um, you can reflect on some of the things we talked about la last time. I remember there was some concern about transportation. Food was one of the others. Sure. So um, transportation, we, we are able to offer transportation for all families. If families are concerned um, about what that might look like on the bus, they are um, minimizing, or I shouldn't minimize, say minimizing, I should say that they are um, filling the buses at 50% capacity. So they are practicing social distancing on the bus as well. And again, families have the opportunity to drop off their student if they're not comfortable with busing, but we are able to offer busing for all families that are interested. Um, and then what was the other question, Tammy? The other one you answered, it was about um, meals and whether they bring their meals or what have you. So I think you explained that with snacks. Marcia, did you remember a question from last time? I thought you were going to speak up. Sure. Um, I don't remember if this was a question, but it's something maybe Julie and maybe Julie already mentioned this. Um, but we are um, expecting all uh, preschool children to wear masks to school. Mm -hmm. And those masks, you know, are worn on the bus at school. 
and worn on the bus on the way home again. Thank you, yes. Another question that I remembered from last time is, does anything happen on Fridays? So at the preschool level, um, we don't have any programming that families need to do on Fridays. And so that would be today to complete any activities that we have sent home. And we will send home activities um, for families, two days worth of activities for each student. And another question just came up. Um, did you name a hard date that that information will be coming in the mail? So they actually left the building today. So most families, hopefully, if they're not receiving someone out Friday, so hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday at the very latest. And if you're really interested, they can give me a call and I can let them know as well which day their student is on because we know snail mail is slow. That's why we call it snail mail. <laughs> so we have placed everybody, so we're happy to take the calls and to um, let them know where their student is at if, if they wanna do that. And speaking of communication, um, what are the ways that parents can expect to hear from early childhood or their preschool teacher? So we, I will use Skyward to communicate with them. I will do just um, just a general monthly um, information that I give to them, and their teachers will communicate with them every single week. Their teachers send out a weekly newsletter that lets them know what's happening in the classroom, so then it makes it easy for them to communicate with their student to find out um, actually what was happening. Because if you ask a little one, what did you do? They say, I played, which is great, because that's what we want them to do. Um, but we provide you with actually what's what's happening instructionally as well. And that's on a weekly basis. And I don't see any more live, live questions, not too chatty tonight. Well, if that's the case, I do want to thank all of the families that joined us this afternoon. Uh, you are always welcome to uh, ask questions, and you can do that by calling us, by emailing us, and we will respond as quickly as we can. We know that this is an important time for you and your child, and it's our goal to ensure that their start to school uh, as a three- or four-year-old is a very happy and uh, successful time for them, and we look forward to um, meeting you and your child. And uh, we wish everyone a really wonderful school year. And before we sign off, we got a we got another question that slid right. in. It's a good one. Okay. So um, if you're in a preschool at at, at a school site, um, can you expect to hear from that principal then about drop off? How drop off will look? Yep, so not the principal, but the preschool teacher will walk you through. So if you're dropping off your student, your preschool teacher, you will all receive a call next week and they will set up a time for you to either come in or just chat with them, whatever you're most comfortable with. And at that time, they will direct you if you're a parent that's dropping off where to drop off your student. Thank you. Tammy, is there anything else? I don't see any others, so I think we look good today. All right. Again, thanks, everyone. Wishing you a, a great end to your day. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.